Japanese automotive media in the 90s and early 2000s through shows like Best Motoring and Video Option shaped the way I view car culture today. They utilized racing stars of the time to showcase what we now regard as the golden era of Japanese tuning. I couldn't wait for each next episode as these icons drove these cars to the absolute limit on track. These days, I'm so lucky that I get to work alongside these same individuals that inspired me all those years ago. For this most recent trip to Japan, I was able to hang out with a few of them over the course of a single day. Nobuteru Tanaguchi's nickname is affectionately known as Nob, which is the first three letters of his first name. But it also stands for no one better. Because well, in Japan, there is no one better. He has competed in so many different racing disciplines from drifting, endurance racing, super GT, time attack, and everything else in between with a steering wheel and four tires. In the car culture community, he is most well known for being a huge Nissan Silvia fan, at one point building the ultimate trio of S chassis, S13, S14, and S15, all in red. This morning, we headed over to check out his personal garage where he stores his drift practice car and also his built from the ground up S15. So when he was younger, like 16, 17 years old, he used to race motorcycles. Yeah. That's how he got started. And he had like over 60 trophies in the house. <laughs> he just got <laughs> tired of them. So when he wasn't there, his, his dad threw them away, most of them. Oh no. So they could have killed me, Nagrata. Out of all S13, S14, S15, this is the cleanest one I've ever seen. I can't believe how nice this is. And then of course, he has his S13 practice car with this crazy razzle-dazzle livery. <laughs> it kind of looks like those uh, camos they put on prototype cars when they're testing at the Nürburgring. Another SR, very, very surprising, honestly. This is really the cool thing that I have always liked about the Japanese tuning philosophy. Simple is better, and look, it still has the stock fan shroud and everything. Yeah. How much power does this make? Uh, 400. 400. That's all you need for practice, huh? Ah, uh, I thought Jibun. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. It's just like the perfect balance for practicing, you know, the techniques for the drifting. So it was built between Kawabata and a local shop. Uh -huh. uh, but Kawabata did all the, you know, the planning and the setting up of the car just to get it right. <laughs> Dude, 20s. But it works, I don't know, it makes it work. Like, it's just way too big, but look at it. Why does that look so good? So good, it just nails the look so well. Hey, if you like what you're watching, do me a favor. Go check out the Haggerty Drivers Club. 24-7 roadside assistance, flatbed towing, subscription to our award-winning magazine, and more. Sign up today. Link's right down here in the description. I tend to exaggerate when I talk about cars that I'm absolutely in love with, but to be fair, this was without a doubt the cleanest and most well put together street S15 I've ever seen. Getting shuttled around by Tanaguchi was a blast and funny thing to me was that he had an old option DVD playing in the car from back during his D1 Grand Prix days. Nob told me that he is at a point in his life where he's working on collecting all the 90s JDM legends one by one. And while he has a long ways to go, he is personally overseeing each and every one of these builds to his exact taste and liking. Seeing his pristine S15 gave me some insight into what the rest will look like. Knowing him, these cars won't be sitting like museum pieces once they're built. You gotta love Japan. We pull up to shoot Japan's probably most iconic racing driver with 
one of his most iconic cars. And then it's just so many supercars and nice cars in this parking lot. It is just so crazy. I also love the fact that they give respect. You know, immediately, as soon as he pulled up, they all recognized him. They all recognized him, of course. And they were all kind of talking amongst each other. And then yeah. they, eventually they came by to like meet him, you know? I know, and people don't bother him. That's the great part, you know? Probably if it would be even like, you know, how it was the other day for the New Year's meet, yeah. it would be the same. They would just leave him alone. Yeah. They'll just like bow and give respect. And, yeah. You know. yeah. He gets to drive the craziest cars in the world. Why is it that his personal car is a S15? Why does he choose to keep driving S15 with a SR, stock SR? It, it makes so much sense. Like he said, basically, he's very much in love with how all the 90s cars were very light and they didn't have a lot of electronic devices to kind of, you know, protect you. And uh, this is basically the last one of that era, right? Is the final one that Nissan made, which was the front engine rear wheel drive chassis. And he just wanted to make the best version of that. That's why he made this car. Pretty simple, makes total sense. I think we have all the same opinions, right? Yes, 100%. <laughs> so it's a 2.2 stroker kit from HKS, uh, forged internals. Head door, yeah, stock head, 450 yeah, horsepower. Cam, only cams have been changed. Uh, HKS low mounted turbo. I would love to build this exact car. Like, I cannot believe. I mean, the it's engine. Simple. It's just simple. It's, it's so just, simple. Yeah. And it makes good, reliable power, you know? This is what you need, though. Has he drifted this? No. No, no, no drift car. Well, no, honto wa machi nori mo shitakunai no. Ano, saki mo yutta he doesn't want to ruin it because it's just built so well. Like he's mentioning that he's been painting it, like it's been painted underneath too, right? It's essentially like a brand new car. Yeah, like everywhere you look, it's perfect. So he wants to keep it that way. As we were wrapping up our shoot with Tanaguchi, we coincidentally saw Maya Arito drive by in her GR86. If you didn't already know, she is the daughter of the legendary racing driver, Max Arito. I quickly texted her and she told us to come by for a visit since the race shop was only a five minute drive away. This of course brings me to one of my mini pinch me, I must be dreaming moments. A few years back, I had a chance to visit Max at his shop where he personally instructed me on his racing simulator with that ever so infamous JDM finger pointer. I was more nervous than anything else, so it was really tough for me to put down a clean lap. Since then, I've been lucky enough to shoot with Max and Maya on multiple occasions. Maya has taken it upon herself to follow in her dad's footsteps, racing and building cars, as well as assisting with the family business. What? Wow. This is... Modify. Yeah, just a little bit. Research yeah. tank. How, how much horsepower? Is it oh, power is the same, maybe. 620. But for response. 620, yes. Oh, so those are the new tail lights. Yes, this is a Mac Thorido. Oh. Mac Thorido. Oh, wow. Yeah, really nice. It updates the look. Yeah, did you see the front one? Yeah. The front ones kind of make it look almost like a Supra. Yeah. Because of the abrupt timing, the Aritos and the rest of the crew were slammed getting ready for Tokyo Auto Salon. So we let them get back to work and we headed to the Saitama Prefecture to catch up with Daigo Saito.
Daigo is without a doubt the most well-known Japanese drifter and he is one of the most successful, both on and off track. He has transitioned from being a pro driver to now being a car builder and mentor to the next generation of professional drifters. In terms of high-end drift car builds, no one pumps them out as fast as Daigo and his team. They have been known to strip down a car to its bare chassis back to a fully functioning pro competition vehicle in as little as three months. <laughs> I know. Hey. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. We miss you so much. <laughs> what are you working on? So much going on. Every time we come here, so many amazing builds, so many cars. This is so crazy. What? SLS. Is it gonna be a drift car? Yeah. What engine? 6.3? Mercedes? Put, yeah, Mercedes with turbo. Twin turbo? Yes. This car is GT3, race engine, then put turbo. SLS, real. Oh, GT car? AMG Mercedes factory race car. This was a Super GT? Super GT. Yeah. Super GT Super 300. GT 300, 300. GT 300 yeah. car. This is gonna be incredible. Look at this. Every time, it gets crazier <laughs> and crazier. When it was racing in GT 300, it didn't make that much power then, huh? Yeah, only Probably. 300 horsepower. 300 horsepower. <laughs> With the restrictors, it only made 300 horsepower. So then, once it's twin turbo, what's your goal? Yeah, more. The stock motor in the one that's sold in the market is like 600 stock. So he said two turbos on that. Whatever horsepower he wants. <laughs> Whatever horsepower he wants. What I really wanted to see was Daigo Land. It's Daigo's personal drift playground and car storage facility. When he has his barbecues and stuff, he wants to do ride-alongs and he wants somebody to chase around. So usually we'll be the, the target. <laughs> nice. So he'll be like, oh, you can just drive the car real quick. Just drive in front. And then there's like a layout where you gotta go. Yeah. And you know, the little circuit, like they do it all the time. <laughs> this is what he uses for his little racetrack here. What the hell? Oh my God. They've been bashed in so much. There's pretty much nothing left in the back. Whoa. This is how messy, like when you're Look at this, look at this door. All of these are tire marks from this car. And look at this door. Just banging doors. Oh my god.
That's still fun for you, huh? That's a lot of fun. <laughs> Tell me about it. I was, uh, I was genuinely scared. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, what a line. I've never seen a drift car take so much abuse. I could not believe how aggressive and how close they were able to tandem with such little horsepower. It really made me rethink everything I've learned so far about drifting. Daigo did throw me the keys and I did end up doing a couple donuts and figure eights, but I was so afraid to get close to the walls because of course they're naturals and it's not my car. <laughs> they make it look so easy. I had no e I don't how do you do that? How do you do it? Hey, hold on, hold on. So you can oh film him so you can also enjoy this. Please hit up Fat Five Racing for appointments to drive the Miatas. <laughs> <laughs> We ended up dropping by Daigo's home where he keeps his forever cars. Daigo Saito transformed the entire first floor of his house into a garage. I see that. It's a samurai sword. What is this engine exactly? Mopar NASCAR. It's a Mopar NASCAR engine. Both of these are the same engine? Why did you build these? <laughs> what are they for? It was his idea. Both of the cars actually are built so it'll pass FD regulations. For Formula Drift? Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Part of it is because it's just the chassis themselves are so rare. They were actually both full cars. Nothing wrong with it. It wasn't like a rusted chassis or a barn find. It was actually two cars that were actually on like a sales floor selling for enthusiasts to have. Just not GTRs, but I think they're like GTXs or something. Yeah, I remember when he first started cutting these up and I was just so blown away that he was doing this. Yeah, I know. He always gets a lot of heat from the purist, but I think everybody has their own opinion. Half of me thinks like, oh man, that's such a waste. I would drive it the way it is. But also it's kind of cool that people like him would do something to the car. And there's a lot of guys like that in Japan, you know, from like, let's say from RWB and Liberty Walk and guys like that too, same thing. They create something totally new to the point where it's like a new genre. And I think if you keep it stock all the time, then you will never get to that. And I think these guys were kind of able to do that and kind of open up a new door for everybody to say, hey, you can still do stuff like this. It's got all the parts that everybody uses in the States. It's got winner's rear end and drivetrain. Everything is like not Japanese. So it's like a hybrid. And he said, you can actually go to a competition and probably do pretty good in it too. This motor, he always had his eyes on this when we were competing in the US. Sam Hubinet had that charger. He wanted that because it was a whole package because it sounded good. He liked the way the motor sounded, uh, the car and everything, it was super American. And that's kind of where it all started because he liked this motor and the way it sounds. We just love shooting in Japan so much. That's why we spend about a month there capturing as much car culture as possible. This time did not disappoint. Being able to shoot with three JDM legends in one day was a dream come true. <laughs>